Hey all, I'm Aaron Locke. So one of the most common tasks that arises uh, when building robots is a task of trying to score or shoot or launch some kind of element at some kind of goal or target. There are a lot of considerations to make when you're building or designing your shooting mechanism. Uh, safety is probably the most important consideration because the parts and the pieces of these mechanisms tend to move very fast. They themselves can become flying projectiles at the mechanism were to fall apart. Um, and because we are shooting elements across the room or at some kind of goal or target, it's always a good idea to wear safety glasses. Other considerations to include are the size or the shape or the weight of the object that you're shooting. Also the distance or the height that you have to shoot the object. Of course, um, how the element is going to be loaded into the robot. Uh, is an important consideration. And then the parts and the pieces or the resources that you have to build your shooting mechanism out of. There are a lot of different types of shooting mechanisms and we're gonna look specifically at two of those today. The first is this flywheel system. And you see this a lot used on baseball pitching machines or softball pitching machines. But it consists of these two wheels up here that spin. And those are driven by tornado motors those Tornado motors have 20 to 1 gearboxes on them. Now, a standard Tornado doesn't come with a 20 to 1 gearbox. It has a 60 to 1 gearbox on it. But by replacing that with 20 to 1 gearbox, we're sacrificing torque for the sake of speed or rotational speed on our flywheels. Um, because we're sacrificing torque, then we've got two of those Tornados that are synced together through a chain drive system. That chain drive system then drives this gear train down below and that gear train is geared up to give our flywheels even more rotational velocity and that spits our golf balls out even further. As a ball comes down from the hopper through the robot and hits the flywheels, the flywheels spit the ball out the front of the robot where it hits this ramp. And this ramp is what gives the ball its arch trajectory or sometimes called parabolic trajectory. Now the cool things about parabolas is that they're predictable. You can use a branch of mathematics called quadratic equations, which is a part of algebra, to solve specifically for the distance an object needs to be in order to land it in a specific target. And so you can program your robot to do all these calculations for you based on the distance the object or the robot is away from the target. And so by using these calculations within your robotic program, then you know exactly where your robot needs to be to score a goal. There are several other advantages to using a flywheel system like this. One is that you can adjust the speed of the motors to adjust the distance that you're shooting your elements. So if your targets are further away or closer, then you can adjust those motors to compensate. Because it doesn't take any time, you can just continuously launch balls through the flywheels, then you get this rapid shooting motion. Um, and so you don't have to take a lot of time to reset and do that kind of thing. Uh, but there are some disadvantages to using a flywheel system like this. One is that, well, it really only shoots round objects like these golf balls that we're shooting here. Another disadvantage is that as the battery wears down, then the motors tend to slow down. And so that can affect your accuracy unless you're driving your motors with encoders. This second robot has a different type of shooting mechanism on it. This mechanism uses a striker that comes forward and hits an element such as this hockey puck and sends it flying through the front of the robot. And this works just like, like in hockey when you've got a hockey stick that hits a hockey puck and shoots it into a goal. And so the way that it works is we've got a tornado here, a single tornado that drives a gear train that cocks the uh, striker. And so this gear train is geared backwards from the one that we saw on the other robot because here our engineering trade-off is that we're sacrificing rotational speed for the sake of more torque. And that allows us to cock that striker back. There are several advantages to using a striker system such as this. For example, you can shoot other objects besides balls or objects that are round. You could shoot square objects if you needed to. Uh, another advantage is that it's good at shooting objects that have to slide across a surface. 
Um, and then you can determine the distance that the object needs to slide by adjusting the spring tension. So those are some advantages to using a system like this. There are also some disadvantages to using a striker system. One is that generally you have decreased distance because of the sliding object and the surface that the object is sliding on. The friction between those two slows the object down. Uh, another disadvantage is that as the striker comes forward, that sudden stop can be hard on the parts and cause a lot of wear and tear. Another disadvantage is that the caulking system to pull the striker back can be complex a lot of times. We're using a torque NATO here that's geared up with this gear train to give us more torque to pull it back, but that system can be complex sometimes. And then uh, the shooting speed of the robot can be slower because of the time it takes to pull the striker back, um, get an element in place, and then shoot the element off the front of the robot. Besides the flywheel system and the striker system, there are several other shooting systems that you can put on your robot. And we encourage you to use the engineering design process to determine which system works best for you and your robot. Like we always say, have fun, build some robots, and we'll see you next time.